It's always a great night when we get to welcome Maria Brink of In This Moment back to Loud Wire Nights. In these times, the first question is always, how are you doing, Maria? How is your family? Hi there. Thank you so much. It's nice to talk to you again. Um, we're getting through it because we're in New York, so it's a little bit uh, of you know intensity out here for sure. But we're getting through it. We're all, everybody's just doing social distancing and, um, and I've went around my mom, but only because my mom lives next door. So if she's outside gardening, I'll like stay like in the street and wave at her in her garden. Like that's the closest I'm, I'm getting to her to keep her safe. So it's pretty crazy, but it's really also beautiful to see so many people coming together to help and the community's really trying to work together and, Last time it felt like anything like this was honestly 9-11, really, you know, where this, this, this intensity of what's going on and whatnot. But we're trying to really work hard here just to stay healthy mentally and go for walks and, uh, you know, write music. And I'm trying to brainstorm ways I can be creative to keep my, my mind busy. Love it. I was going to ask yeah. you, have you picked up any new habits or hobbies, right? Because those are the two. It's either a new habit, which is probably not a good thing, or a new hobby. Yeah, you know what? I do have a new hobby. I have never in my life like worked in like landscaping or gardening or anything like that. I've always loved the woods and the forest and I'm drawn to it and I make things with sticks. Like I make figures with sticks or like symbols and like I, I've always loved to do that in nests. I love making nests, but I've never worked with like flowers and plants and like outside and I've been doing like that type of stuff. And it's actually really beautiful. It's really tranquil. And so I'm trying to push myself with that. That's my new hobby for sure. And I'm, I play piano, but I'm very not great at it. I've done a few shows, but it's just very, you know, simplistic and intimate and beautiful, but I'm learning to try to expand that craft now. I'm trying to learn some in this moment songs too. Very productive, very yeah. productive. So let's talk about mother for a minute. Um, in this moment, seventh studio album, it was released March 27th. Obviously, the world was already in the thick of COVID madness at that point. You chose to put out the album anyway instead of delaying it. And traditionally, our genre, we have a lot of physical album buyers, uh, meaning, of course, CDs, vinyls, LPs, cassettes. And that declined by 36% in the week ending March 19th. I don't have the data for the week of the 27th, but it's a week off. You can't imagine it's it's too different. Um, in retrospect, right. do you still still think that that was a good idea to put it out anyway? Yeah, because, you know, the way we kind of looked at it was we can postpone it, you know, um, because it's going to hurt us in some form. So, you know, it, it in some ways it has a little that impact of, of hurt. But at the same time, it's going to help people. Like, I just feel like right now people need things that can help their mind escape, you know, go to other places, whether or not it's a good movie or it's music, or I think we all need to just escape every day to, to have that balance with what everyone's going through. So we just said, you know, we just want to give it to everyone and kind of help people have that escape. And just, even though who knows how, we don't even know when they're going to let us tour again at this point. <laughs> so, so we're like, but we wanted to just give and give people something. So we're just going with it. And I think so far it's been really beautiful and it is giving people an escape. And that's what we wanted. You definitely see that in the comments and it's very selfless. So an extra reason for anyone listening right now to stream the heck out of mother. And we're definitely going to talk <laughs> about the tour. But before we get to that, as I was listening to the record, my all time favorite song was mother. Is it true that your mothers sing backing vocals on mother? Yeah, that's them on that. So like all the harmonies that you hear in the back that's them singing. My one mother is like plays guitar acoustic all the time. And um, she's always singing and that's her thing. She loves it. And then my other mother is very shy and has a beautiful voice, but very quiet and timid. And she's really shy to sing things sometimes. So it was a big deal to get her on there. So, but they did it and we all held hands in the, in the room there when we sang together. And it was a really beautiful moment to kind of put their, their spirit and their soul into that song with me. Oh my God. I love that. What was it like the, the first time they heard the finished product? They loved it so much. And my, my mother, she, she loves Stevie Nicks. They both loved Stevie Nicks growing up. And they just, they, I think they inspired me a lot with what I do, obviously, and what I grew up listening to and 
music that she showed me. She loves so many cool people. Um, she brought me all these concerts because she was a really young teen mom. So she just took me with her, you know, like the long <laughs> tickets or whatever. So she, I think she exposed me to a lot. So I think she really felt that in that song and she felt connected to me. And at that time, the other song on the album called Legacy, we wrote my, my grandfather who had just passed, which was my mother's whole world, like her whole life. He's a hero of our family, but she took care of him the last 10 years. He lived with us, like, you know, really, really close relationship. And he had just passed. So and when I wrote that song, also in the spirit of that, it's like, letting her know that because he always took care of her, but now I'll take care of her type thing. I was actually going to ask you about Legacy Next, definitely one of the standout tracks off Mother. Did you feel your grandfather's presence as you worked on the song? Sometimes you hear musicians say, I could feel him in the room. Oh, yeah. And the thing about that song is, you know, like I said, when my grandfather was passing, he actually had moved out of his home in with us for a long time. But at the end of his days, he wanted to be in his own home that he built. So we basically moved him back in his home and everyone went there to take care of him. So all the family was there with him during this whole process. And so all the lyrics are having to do with we all laid our hands on him as a family. All the women did held their hands on him and we all sang to him. He loved music and he loved dancing. And we were all having these last moments for the last few days. Um, with him so all I'm referencing all those things in that song and he was just the most biggest inspiration to me and us and I was really in an emotional time and my grandfather had just passed we had to actually push our album further because of what was going on and I had to be there for these sacred moments so Mm. by the time we honored him and he had passed and I was, you know, with my family and it was time for me to go. I was had all these emotions in me and felt all that stuff. And by the time I got to the studio, we went to go start writing and things like that. That's the first thing that I sang. The first thing that came out my mouth or anything was this song. And so I hadn't, I hadn't sang in months. I'd been through all of this stuff. And then that was the first thing that I let out. So yeah, I felt him and it was, it was like, so emotional. It was insane. You that can, I was oh. crying. The people that were writing in the room uh, with us trying to help us and things like that, they all were crying. It was really emotional. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was like a moment. <laughs> it was. It's beautiful. Uh, the emotion comes across in the song. And I, one of my all-time favorites off Mother, the record. So there's three covers on Mother. We Will Rock You, of course, mm. with Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm, Taylor Momsen of The Pretty Reckless. Right. We talked about that. It is perfection. I could totally see the Mazzy Star cover of Into Dust. Get that. What drew you to the cover of Fly Like an Eagle by the Steve Miller Band? I thought that was unexpected. It was unexpected for us, too. That was not, we did not try to do that. So we wrote the music that you're hearing underneath. Mm-hmm. If you were to mute the Fly Like an Eagle melody line, we had, weren't even thinking of that song whatsoever. We wrote that song as an intro song for our track. We wanted to have, or for the album, we wanted to have this song that the first song on the album that built up. That's why normally you don't put a cover song first. We wouldn't normally do that, but mm-hmm. we built this music for that. And I kept trying all these different melodies and I can't remember exactly how we, we heard it in the car that day or what happened, but we were listening to the music and we just started humming fly like an eagle. And it was like one of those funny things where we were like, Oh, of course that fits so beautifully. How interesting that sounds with that mishmash of totally separate music that Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the melody, but somehow the melody goes over it perfectly. And I just was singing it a little bit and we, we left it and we did whatever and we did all this stuff, but we kept hearing that over it. And then when I sang it too, with that music, I just felt like I was flying. I felt so powerful. So we were like, let's just, Let's just, you know, use the, the melody line with our music. So that's how that happened. That wasn't intentional. The in-between yeah. is the current single, the in-between. Uh, a lot, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is random, but a lot, we're looking at the video now, a lot of hands on your face, all these hands on your face, which of course take on a completely <laughs> <laughs> new meaning. But what can you tell us about the song lyrically and how it came together? Um, you know, that song, actually, believe it or not, we were done with our album. Um, and we were, I was already home and flew home and we were done. And our A&R guy, um, who we trust a lot, Pete Gambard, he's really talented. He's an amazing guy. 
he usually really trusts us as an artist. We don't ever really have to do another song. And, you know, he doesn't really make us change anything. He lets me be really creative and artistic. And in, you know, in major label worlds, you know, sometimes they really fight you on that stuff. So I, I have so much respect for this guy. And he basically called me and wanted me to do one more song. And at that point, I was tired. And, I, you know, like I said, I went through all that stuff with my grandfather and my family. And then I had to leave. And now I was finally back home. And they were wanting me to do one more song. And he wanted something more visceral. And everything on the album didn't necessarily have kind of that side to it. And so when I, I really listened back to the album and I could hear uh, maybe there was something missing there. Maybe he, he was on to something. So I really dug deep with that one and needed to bring out this visceral, more raw, intense side. And I had so much built up at the, at the time. So it was really easy for me. And thank God. Sometimes you got to push yourself that one extra step and thank God, you know, he pushed us because it wound up being one of our favorites. And then we were, it was explosive and it was perfect. And so that's how that all kind of happened. In this moment should be on the road right now, right? With Black Veil Brides yeah. Dead and Raven Black. It's been postponed due to COVID-19, of course, like every other tour. How concerned Ooh. are you about the possibility of not touring for another year? Like, have you looked at maybe... I don't know, rerouting maybe places that are less hit. Is that an option? Like, where's your head at? You know, it, it, we, we have no uh, control whatsoever, period. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really just up to the, yeah, the government and when it's safe, you know, because the last thing that we want to do is, you know, do a concert and a bunch of people came together and then people got sick from that or somebody died from that. And I don't want that responsibility. I, I want everyone to be safe and do what we have to do to make sure safety's first. Is it strange? Yes. It is driving me crazy. You know, I'm like, we have a brand new album out. We have a brand new visual show and new choreographing and so much new exciting stuff for people to see. But mm. I know everyone will still see it when the time comes. I've never been off this long before. It's pretty strange and <laughs> surreal. But safety, and I'm, and I have, that's my outlet too, you know, like I have so much fire in me and in my everyday life, I'm a very actually calm and kind of really peaceful and I'm just really like, so I let all my fire and all my rage, everything out with my music, you know, so I also have that balance I'm trying to uh, work with, <laughs> but I'm doing good. I'm figuring out healthy ways to release the art, but Anyway, yeah, we can't wait to be back on the road. And they actually do have a full tours uh, locked in. We've rescheduled all the dates. Everything's moved. We have dates locked in, but we can't announce it and we can't give it a 100% thumbs up until the government says so. So the good thing is, is we have the tour already moved. We have it all locked in. We have the dates, but we just need to get a thumbs up on the government that it actually can really happen before we announce it. Come on, government. We're counting on you. I know. <laughs> we and, you know, as soon as they could just get, you know, some sort of, even something to treat, I think, this sickness with, I think then a lot of us will be, feel so much safer, you know, even if there's not necessarily a vaccination. As right. long as they find some sort of antibody or something that you take it and it makes you better, you know, that's what we need. And I think everyone will feel safe, you know? Yeah. It's crazy right now. We'll wrap on this one. Yeah. Um, everyone always describes your voice as mesmerizing or most people. That's I, that's what I've read most mesmerizing. And of course, you have this way of delivering your words. That's all your own. You know, I don't know how to describe it. You know what it is. Listeners know what it is. When did you master that? Like, when did you go from singing to having a sound, if that makes sense? Yeah, I I think personally for me, it was on our blood album. I think we had this giant transition happen when we went on to do our blood album. And I think that there was some sort of freedom happened. I, you know, a bunch of our band members quit. Uh, we got dropped by our management. We thought it was the end of the band. And from there, we had this brand new rebirth to everything where it was like, I'm not holding back anymore. I'm going to... I'm going to like everything that I ever dreamed of that seemed crazy in my head. I was just freed myself. And I think in doing that, uh, something came out of me where I think I started creating uh, for the first time, a signature thing that I felt was kind of mine, I guess. Yeah. 
Definitely all your own. Well, thank you, Maria Thanks. Mother. Something that the listeners don't know is that uh, my internet crapped out. We're all working from home, right? And Maria was kind enough to reschedule and do the second half of the interview. So thank you for just being a cool human. Mother, oh. <laughs> mother, available everywhere for your listening pleasure. We'll most certainly keep you updated on the latest in terms of touring. Um, Till next time, Maria, stay safe. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And everybody, yes, yeah, stream the album, get escape, you know, with the music during all this and stay safe, take care of each other. And we love everybody. And thank you so much for caring to interview us. Okay. Thank we'll you, talk sweetheart. to you soon, Tony. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.